May the 31st, 2025. Guys, this is an update from this morning's video. This is the strangest sunspot I've ever seen. Watch what happens. And this is after the CME left. Look at that right there. We had another CME with a massive um, filament, and that filament collapsed back to the sun's surface and uh, produced what's called a hydro flare, guys. Check this out. I've never seen anything this intense on the surface of the sun. This sunspot is different. We knew it was on the first rotation. Now we're in the second and we're seeing a tremendous amount of energy. Check this out. We're going to look at it from a couple of different cameras. And what you saw is the flare that we're tracking now, the CME, but there's going to be more and they're not tracking them now. But you had that flare, then you had this flare that get that full CME. So what happened is we had the two flares, one here, one here. And then since the video this morning, new activity in this area. We'll take a look at it again a couple of different areas. And it's triple magnetically configured. That makes it very active. Look at that. And it lasted a very long time. So whatever energy, as you watch this thing die out, will last that long as we uh, as it comes to Earth. It won't be a quick blast. It will be a long, slow, evolving impact. Now let's change camera, same satellite, the SDO, just so we can see the uh, activity in a different filter. There's a lot of smaller filaments around the sun I'm noticing now. And behind all of this, we've got a system right here that's going to follow up. It may have been one of the sunspots that was also on that first rotation. But look at this as it creates that secondary hydro flare. There was a right there. This thing look, launched all the way across the sun and stroke over here. What we're seeing is a long duration delay in the flare with a lot of small flares during that long duration. In other words, as that big one's tapering off, we're getting rapid fire smaller ones. See that? And each one of those, that's three coronal um, mass ejections plus a fourth one if you watch on the rotation that comes off this area. Now this one should not be very earth affecting, but everything in this area will be. Take a look at it. But again, very active here. This filament's going to leave the sun. Check that out. See how one end will rise right there? And it's going to leave. But uh, then, again, this one is amazing. I've never seen a flare this large react quite like this one is doing. I wonder what's going on. And one other camera on the SDO. Each of the 12 gives you a different perspective because the filters on them filter out certain things, enhance others. But again, there's that sunspot. Massive filter. You see the hydro uh, flare reaction here, but watch across this entire area. Probably 80, 90,000 kilometers right through there. You see that? And with another flare after that. We better take a look at uh, Solar Ham just a moment. And just quickly before we do that, let's take a look at what's called the colorized magnetogram. Here's our large sunspot here, different colorations, different magnetic configurations within that. Triple right now, we're dealing with that. Here's another sunspot, double configured here, another one. And again, we're going to be seeing some areas coming around the sun before too long. But we got a very bright flare from right here. But this area is still growing, and they've listed it again, triple magnetically configured. Now, Solar Ham has it set up like this. Three days, a flare here, two days ago, yesterday, the two that we saw. Then in the video this morning, we were watching this flare. Now, it had not dropped all the way down this far yet. It's called a, a you know, a long flare, not a short flare. But uh, these lines here, this was almost an X flare, a very strong M flare. These are the uh, eruptions that we saw while we were watching the big flare and the uh, the big sunspot with that hydro flare. And I was saying, watch inside, is it still there? These smaller flares popping up. 25% chance of X flares today. 99% chance of C flares. 60% chance of M flares. And 20% chance of a proton event. Now, we are in a G1 magnetic storm, guys. Now, for today, KP index of 4 to 5 with a G1 magnetic storm going on now. Tomorrow, G3, guys. The day after that on June the 2nd, a G4. And that's what we all went through when we had such a rough time, remember? 
And I think to everybody that got zapped by this G4 over a month ago, I think it more than likely changed something, made us a little more sensitive to the effects of it, things like that, maybe some other effects. I don't know. You've got uh, Malachi chapter 4. You always got to keep that in the back of your mind when you start seeing the sun become very active like this. But this G4, guys, is not going to be fun, and it may arrive quicker because just tonight, or at 7 p.m. Uh, Central, we've got a very strong incoming coronal mass ejection that you saw this morning. And on the sun spots, uh, now let's look at this severe geomagnetic storm watch. A strong or G3 to severe G4 geomagnetic storm watch was officially added by NOAA beginning late in the day, June 1st, that's tomorrow. And into June 2nd, depending on the state of the solar wind, geomagnetic storming could also persist into June 3rd. Aurora sky watchers at middle to high latitudes should be alert beginning Sunday. More updates in the days ahead. It says additional M flares since that M8 event last night have been observed around AR4100. That's the big one. Beta Gamma Delta still growing. It says, um, this includes a fairly rapid M4.5 flare at 818 UTC, May 31st. The region's magnetic complexity increased and now contains a magnetic delta. Additional M flares will remain possible, and there's an increased 15% chance of a strong flare or strong X flare. And I think they've raised that to 20% now, guys. It says proton levels following the M8 event are slowly on the rise. An early CME tracking model by NASA shows a direct passage uh, by June 1st. Although, the, and this is the author, so, uh, Solar Ham, he says, I think the timing may be a little quick. That's what I said this morning. That's a very quick movement to impact. But the sun is very active right now, and we may get it. If it's a little late, it may be, because a lot of times they will give us a seven-hour plus or minus window of uh, impact time. But it says the official CME tracking model should be released on Saturday and likely a geomagnetic storm watch for the days ahead. And that's come out. But the, what they haven't done, and I'll show you, is they have not updated the CME tracking model. And guys, this is very powerful. I think more people should be aware of what's going on with our sun in this new sunspot. You've got Mercury coming right here. We saw that this morning. But uh, this sunspot, guys, is very large, very wide very powerful see the colorations in it and you can compare that with a chart here in the bottom also as we look at this we're not seeing this uh, row of secondary cmes behind this one but it they're going to come out when the model updates in such rapid succession guys it could turn into what's called a cannibal flare event where one or two of these overtake the flare in front and they combine and make a stronger flare itself stronger, more uh, proton density, things like that. Now, our solar wind is up 671 kilometers per second right now, guys, and that is 1.38 million miles per hour. Think about that. Also, our shields are about to, re well, very, I think they are reopened right now. you got a gap between the uh, magnetic charges here, red and black lines. But uh, during that G4, this thing, opened up very wide red line was down here black line up here for nine hours during the beginning of that g4 magnetic storm and i think that had a lot to do with the effects that are again we're going to have to put up with but again at that speed this thing has been much higher look at this overnight coming through here 816 you're 1.5 1.6 million miles an hour again that we've had two six point quakes strike the earth since this started right in this area right there and our tectonic plates guys are feeling this this is the ring of fire you're looking at it right here here's one this is a very active area this is 6.1 in the chromatic islands let me move this over just a little bit so you can see this information sorry about that here also 6.1 76 kilometers south of kushiro japan very dead dangerous area and you can see you got smaller quakes here. You've got them also lined up up in the Aleutians. Watch for this area when that CME hits. Just saying because it's going to come in when the Pacific and the western part of the U.S. are still in pretty good sunlight. 
you've got a 3.1, I think it was here. Yeah, 3.1, uh, two kilometers southwest of Concord, and, and smaller quakes. But this is just the beginning of three or four days of what may become a lot of quakes. It's all, the heating is already kicking in the fires up into Canada big time. Let's take a look at that. Check out these satellite images, guys. This is Saskatchewan, Canada, Saskatoon, Edmonton, Alberta. Fort McMurray and Fort Smith, Yellow Knife is here. Look at the fires. Look at the hot spots. All of this is rotating in this uh, high pressure zone, guys, and dumping into the central U.S. right now. Look at the explosions. And, guys, you know this is in the oil field region, in the sand, what they call the oil sands fields. And, guys, it could be shutting down some drilling. If it does, you're going to see increases in gas prices start to go up real quick. I think one of the big fires is only four kilometers away from some of the major oil production sites, and they've already evacuated all unnecessary personnel. And there's my huskies, and Tina's pulling up uh, in the driveway, and they see it, and they think they got a snack, so they're very happy. More than likely, they do have one in there. Anyway, guys, this is the results. This, uh, you've got earthquakes, these G4 magnetic storms. I'm not looking forward to that. Guys, so prepare to take it easier over the next few days if possible and uh, stay out of the sun. We're watching it. You watch it. This will be updated today again because I think they're going to update some of these models. We're watching it. You watch it. Say goodbye to the Huskies. It's, it's a heads up. Be safe, guys.